Okay, in this video, we are going to design and build a square wave oscillator using an op amp. Now, the op amp I'm using is the NE5534, which you can see on my breadboard. It's a low noise, high speed op amp. It has a high slew rate of 13 volts per microsecond and has a good output drive. Now, normally, when we need a clock circuit, we'll use a 555 timer or a logic inverter oscillator, but sometimes we have a spare op amp in our circuit and we could use that to build a little clock oscillator. Now this capacitor here and this resistor forms the RC time constant which, which determines the output frequency of our oscillator. So if I change out this capacitor to a smaller value it will increase the frequency and we can actually look, have a look on the scope. Now the output of this oscillator is pin 6 of the op amp so we'll connect it up to a scope. So there you can see the output, square wave output which is running at 20 kilohertz and the duty cycle is almost 50 percent. So next we'll have a look at the schematic diagram and check out how the circuit works. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of my op amp oscillator which I built on my breadboard. And it's powered by 12 volts, it's VCC, so it's a single supply circuit. The output is pin 6, so we'll get our square wave output which is feeding our LED for indications. Now this R and C determine the output frequency, so 3.3K R and 0 0.01 microfarad C will give us 20 kilohertz output. We have a voltage divider of 100K each and the output is feeding pin 3 of the op amp and we have a feedback resistor of 100K from pin 6 to pin 3. Now on power up, on time equals 0, pin 2 will be at ground potential because the capacitor will be discharged and pin 3 will go to half VCC because of the voltage divider to 6 volts. Now pin 3 is higher than pin 2, so pin 6 will go high, it will go towards the positive rail. So when pin 6 goes high, this point of the resistor is actually connected to the rail, so this 100K will be in parallel with this 100K. So we'll have 50K ohm on the top resistor and 100K ohm on the bottom as the voltage divider. So pin 3 now will be 8 volts. So this capacitor will start charging, and when it hits 8 volts, now the pin 2 will be higher than pin 3, so pin 6 will go low. Now when pin 6 is low, this resistor now will be in parallel with this resistor, the bottom resistor. So we'll have 100K on the top, 50K on the bottom. So now pin 3 will be at 4 volts. So now the capacitor will start discharging because pin 6 is low. And when it hits 4 volts, it will trigger again. Pin 6 will go high, which puts this resistor in parallel with this, this resistor. And it will switch. And that causes the circuit to oscillate. Okay, here's the schematic of the two voltage dividers that are feeding pin 3 of the op amp, which gives us our two trip voltages of 8 volts, which is 2 thirds VCC, and 4 volts, this is 1 third VCC. So when pin 6 is high, we're going to have a voltage divider of 50K on the top and 100K on the bottom. We'll get 8 volts feeding pin 3 of the op amp, which will give us 2 thirds VCC trigger voltage. That's on charging. And then when the output goes low, We'll have 100K on the top and 50K on the bottom, which gives us 4 volts. That's one third VCC. And that's the trip point for when the capacitor is discharging. So that's how we get our oscillation between these two trip points of 8 volts and 4 volts. Okay, if we put a scope on our timing capacitor, this is what we'll see. So when we first turn it on, it's going to charge up. The capacitor will charge up from 0. And it's going to go towards 8 volts. And when it hits 8 volts, it's going to trigger. And now it's going to discharge down towards 4 volts and then it's going to do that over and over again. So with the scope, looking at the output and looking at the capacitor, we can see the relationship between the charging up to two-thirds VCC and then discharging down to one-third VCC, which gives us our oscillation. Okay, here's the formula to calculate the output frequency of our op-amp square wave generator. So the frequency in kilohertz equals 1 over 1.4 times the resistor in kilohms, so it's 3.3, .3, times the capacitor in microfarads, so it's 0.01, and that will equal 21.6 kilohertz. Now one more note, the resistor of our RC network, 3.3K should be the lowest value, so you go 3.3K or higher, because we have to charge and discharge the capacitor uh, through the resistor, so if we go any lower, it might exceed the source sink capabilities of the op amp. So if we just keep the resistor 3.3K and higher and change our capacitor, then we can calculate our output frequency in kilohertz. Okay, so that was my little quick circuit on how to build an oscillator using an op amp. 
and it's very versatile. You could set the frequency very easily by the capacitor and the resistor. So keep this in your toolbox so next time you need a clock circuitry and you have a spare op amp, you know how to build your own square wave oscillator.